Hello, and welcome to another BlenderWiz video tutorial. This is the second part of the Grand Piano tutorial series. In this tutorial, we will be covering a basic scene and lighting setup, materials, and post-processing. Let's begin by creating a scene setup. So make sure that your cursor is in the center, and let's create a circle. Uh, hit T to bring up the tools. And let's just turn this down to a nice lower number, like 16. Tab into edit mode and scale it up. We also want to fill it, so hit F. Scale it up, fairly large. And then let's uh, extrude this up, scale it out, and delete this top face to create kind of a bowl. When we hit Control-1, it will give it a subsurf divider or subsurface division there. And then let's hit I to, uh, I guess, insert a face, or inset a face, I guess. And that will just increase the number of polys in here, sharpening up this edge. Let's set the shading of our bowl to smooth. And that is actually a fairly basic setup right now. So let's start working a little bit on the lamps. On the right side, I want to have warmer lights, and on the left side, I want a little bit cooler. So let's put our cursor up here, bring in a plane, and rotate that right about there. Should be good. Let's duplicate that, rotate it the other way. This will become our cool, or our warmer lamp, and that will become a cool lamp. And let's just make sure that they're aligned with our piano a little bit better like so. And then from behind, I want a nice, uh, big, bright area. And I'm going to call this a sun, but I know it's not a sun. So let's just get a big plane in here, like so. We want to make sure that it's out of the camera. Actually, all of these should be out of the camera, if at all possible, like that. And then we want a nice, big fill lamp. This one actually is a little bit smaller. We want a nice big fill lamp over the whole thing to just give it a nice even glow. So let's go ahead and name these. So I'm going to call this the, uh, the bowl. There we go. I'm going to call this uh, lamp underscore warm. This one lamp underscore cool. I'm just going to call this one lamp underscore sun. And finally, lamp fill. Let's go ahead and delete this default lamp now. Let's go ahead now and start working on creating some materials and shaders for our lamps so that we can actually see what we're doing. I'm going to go ahead now and actually create a new viewport. Let's call it materials, or there we go. And I'm just going to drag this part up here and change the type to a node editor and set it over to uh, materials. Now with our, uh, our warm lamp selected, hit new to create a new material and let's call it lamp underscore warm. Let's remove the diffuse shader and replace it with an emission shader. Hit F with both the material output and the emission shader connected or selected, and then it will create a connection. And now let's just tint it warm. And I'm going to set the strength up to three. And we'll be doing something very similar with the cool lamp. So let's do that again. So lamp underscore cool delete the diffuse shader, bring in an emission shader, select the material output, and hit F. And this time let's just tint it a little bit cooler, and I'm going to set the strength to 2.5. Now our sun lamp is very similar. Delete the diffuse, bring in an emission shader, connect them, let's name this now, lamp sun and let's tint it yellow, just to be a little bit warmer. 
And the strength will actually be fairly high. Uh, about five should be good. And then finally, let's give our fill lamp. So lamp underscore fill. Let's go ahead and diff delete the diffuse, replace it with an emission, connect them up, and tint it yellow, something kind of like that. And leaving it at a strength of one is actually what we want. Okay, so we're actually going to go ahead now and create the piano paint itself. So with the uh, cabinet selected, grab a new uh, material, and let's just name it Piano Black. Okay, so piano paint is actually fairly deep, not as deep as a car paint, for example, but it does have some depth. So uh, we're going to be cutting this apart a little bit. Um, it has a few layers of glossiness, so we're going to want a few uh, mix shaders in here. So let's bring in a mix shader. And the top will be a diffuse, so let's connect that there. And the bottom is going to be a glossy. And this will give us our first layer. Let's open up the previewer so we can actually see what we're doing. And we'll see it doesn't look like a piano at all. So let's go ahead and turn down the, uh, the color on the diffuse quite a bit. And now let's grab a Fresnel and connect it into the factor. And just leaving it at 1.450 is going to work just fine. So this still doesn't look perfectly like a piano, but what we can do is uh, give it another clear coat over the top of this and it will look quite good. So let's grab another mix shader, plug it in there, and grab a glossy shader. So let's just duplicate this one here and connect those up and change the distribution to sharp and turn down the roughness, or actually by turning it to sharp, it pretty well ignores the roughness. So that is fine. And then just turn down this factor amount to 0 0.05 and that will give us a nice paint for our piano. Now let's go ahead and change the color of our of our viewport so we can actually see what has this material on it. So I've put the piano on layer one. So by hitting one on the uh, keyboard, not the number pad, we can just go to the uh, first layer. So now select all of the parts that require this paint. And once you have those all selected, select the main cabinet here, hit Control L, and hit Materials. And that will allow us to create the links. I'm just going to use the same material on our black keys as well. So that will speed up our process a little bit more. Now notice when you render it, uh, the legs seem to have some issues here, and this is because the normals are reversed. So getting back into our 3D viewport, if we tab into edit mode and over in the uh, properties panel by hitting N, uh, we can see under the mesh display, we can look at the normals. If we zoom in here on our leg, we can see that the normals are kind of facing the wrong direction these little blue lines should be facing out. So to fix this, just hit A to select everything and then recalculate. And then the uh, computer will figure out which direction is outside the uh, mesh and it will reverse them. And hopefully it will do everything correctly. Right now it looks like it has done it as it should. So now let's go ahead and actually create the brass pieces now are the brass material. So with some part that should be brass selected, hit the plus and create a new material. And I'm just going to call it 
Brass. Brass is actually a fairly simple shader. It consists of a diffuse and a glossy. And they're just mixed together with a mix shader. So let's just put that in there and connect those up. And actually we can just leave this factor amount alone. So all we really need to look at here is turning down the roughness to zero in the glossy and tinting it yellow, kind of a yellow green in there should be good. And then let's give this guy a bit of a heavier, bit of a heavier yellow. And that's really all you need for a nice brass. So let's uh, change the color in the viewport and select the parts that are going to be brass and assign them. So there are those. Let's go ahead and do the same with this back wheel back here. Add the new material slot, brass, and assign. And then these parts here are brass as well. And that is good. Also remember that we did put in a small hinge under here. Can't seem to grab it. Right there. And let's give that a brass material as well. If you have any other hinges on here, chances are they will be brass. So you will want to assign that material to them as well. We're going to go ahead now and give the piece back here, the soundboard, a uh, wood material. But first we need to UV unwrap it. So let's head over to the UV editor, tab into edit mode, and really we should be fine if we just unwrap it like that. It doesn't really matter that it's not uniform because the uh, texture that we'll use will be just fine. So let's head back over to our materials right now. Give it a new material and let's call it wood. We can leave the diffuse shader and I'm just going to go ahead and bring in the image texture. So let's do that there. And we can actually directly connect the two. And let's hit open and grab our wood material or wood texture. I actually want it to be slightly pinker, so what I can do is bring in a mix shader, or not a mix shader, uh, an RGB mixer, and if we just plug the two in like that, and we can drag this color around a little bit, so maybe a little bit pink, we can actually adjust the color. So that amount should be pretty good. It pulls a little bit of the yellow out, and it'll give it a slightly redder feel. Now if we bring in the uh, mapping, because if we actually look at it on the piano itself, I will try to find that. There we go. Pull that out. can be a little bit hard to see. Um, it looks a little bit large for the piano, or the scale of our piano. So what we can do, I think if I just have the materials open here, we should be good. Yeah, that should work fine. Uh, what we can do is by using the mapping part here, of course we will need a uh, texture coordinate, so bring that in. Uh, texture coordinate, there we go. Plug UV in. It'll take a second, there we go. We can actually adjust the scale. So set it, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna multiply it by two just to give it a finer grain. And if you don't quite look how, like how it looks right now, you can actually adjust how the material is positioned on the piano. So I guess that looks fine to me, putting that nice interesting piece right back there Got some interesting stuff going on in there. Yeah, that should be good. So that is our material for the wood. We're gonna go ahead and create 
the material for our speaker cover now. So let's create a new material node or a new material slot. And it'll probably display the wood. Unfortunately, that I believe is a bug. So we should just ignore it for now. Okay, so uh, we're going to have to UV unwrap this. So let's head over to the UV editor, tap into edit mode, and let's actually separate this out a bit. So let's hit select that area, and then using the number pad and holding down control, uh, actually let's hit the divide key just to get this into a local view. And I believe actually the whole thing needs to be, uh, needs to have the normals checked. So yeah, as we can see over here, a portion of it doesn't have the normals facing the same direction. So let's just recalculate that and Blender should figure it out. Seems that we have a few issues in here. So let's go ahead and fix those. So I'm actually just going to separate these areas. So there we go. And this bottom one. Can't quite select it. Oh, come on, Blender. There we go. So I'm just going to hit Control E, Mark Seam, and then, yeah, that should be good. Um, let's see. And I believe right to there, if we hit Flip Direction, it will flip our normals and everything should be facing the correct direction now. So that is good. Um, now we need to UV unwrap this. So hit U, unwrap, and we'll see this now. Uh, it will be non-uniform. So if we want to fix that, we can hit uh, Pack Islands and Average them. And that is good. This one right here is the main area. This right here is kind of right in this little crack there. And then this loop is the outer loop. So we don't really care about these two loops. This is the one we are going to work with. So let's bring in a new image. So hit image open. And I've called this image dot. So let's just take this piece here. It's kind of not fitting quite right. Let's try fixing it. Hmm. So non-uniform scale, it'll operate on a non-scaled version. Um, that should be okay, but it doesn't look like it's giving us a circle, which is what's bugging me here. Let's try this. No, that's definitely wrong. So let's just work with that. Maybe scale it along the Y rotate it, try to get it as circular as possible. Should have worked. So something kind of like that should be good. And these dots are just going to uh, poke holes in this, giving us a nice grill. So let's head back over to the materials now. And I'm just going to hit the divide key to uh, get this into a local view. And let's set it to material so that we can actually see what we're doing here. So uh, what we're going to do is we're actually going to have a transparent shader in here. And if we just have the transparent shader plugged in, it will make it completely invisible. So we're going to com combine this with another material. Let's just use diffuse for now. If we bring in a mix shader, plug those in like so, it'll get a semi-opaque look, which isn't quite what we want. We want to just poke holes in this. So we're going to use that image texture to help us out. So by com 
plugging in our uh, color like so. We're going to have to do a few operations first on it though, because right now we're only seeing the dot. What we want to do is we want to invert it. So plug that in, and then we'll start getting holes. We will also want to use the mapping. So let's grab a mapping piece here. Plug vector into vector. It'll screw things up. So we need to bring in a texture coordinate. There we go. Plug UV into the vector, and it should work again. And now if we just scale this up to about 20 on all the dimensions, we get a nice, a nice uh, grill going on here. And then I just want to rotate this 45 along each dimension, and that'll kind of elongate it and make it look more like a grill. So that is our little mesh here. We're going to have to create another material for this outer ring, though. Although we should also change this, give it a little bit of a shine. So let's delete this diffuse, bring in a mix shader here. So we'll work on the, the shader itself. And this is just going to be a glossy and a uh, diffuse. So let's bring in that glossy and the diffuse, like so. Combine those like that. And let's uh, turn this factor down quite a bit and turn the diffuse down as well. Nice dark color. Something kind of like that. We're getting there. It should be fairly dark because this is kind of a plasticky cover over the top of our speaker. But that should be good. Let's go ahead now and actually create the material itself for the, the uh, outer ring as well. So this outer ring is going to be plastic. And it's going to be a fairly rough plastic, actually. So let's go ahead and add in a new material slot. Create a new material. Let's call it black pla plastic. There we go. Like that. And, of course, assign it. So that way we don't lose anything. And this is going to be an interesting piece. We're going to use a uh, Voronoi texture. We should probably look at how it looks. It creates these interesting cells. And um, we're going to use those. We're actually going to switch it to cells. There we go. And let's actually use the factor. There we go. That's good. We're going to use these to kind of create this rough pattern on the surface here. So let's grab an invert, because it's going the wrong direction currently, and a power, or a math node, set it to power. There we go, right there. And if we just plug that into the displacement, hmm, ah, that's wrong. There we go. And let's just connect that into our surface. We'll get this nice chopped up pattern here. So that's good. Um, and really all we have to do for the plastic now is just give it a fairly dark gray color. I mean, you can add a little bit of uh, glossy shader if you want. Uh, let's do that. There we go. Grab a mix. Just connect those up like that. That's way too shiny. Something kind of like that should be good. And that is our speaker cover. Let's do the exact same thing to the other speaker cover now. Hmm. Seems that, oh, yeah, we need to recolor these. So let's just do that. Give this one a nice dark gray and I guess darker gray. <laughs> um, 
Now let's do that to the speaker as well. So we need to unwrap it, but uh, you already know how to do that, so you can do that now. We have two fairly simple materials left to create. One is a nice velvet to go in the speaker cone, and the other is kind of a steel color to uh, go around the speaker. So let's uh, go ahead and with one speaker selected, select pretty much anything that needs to be uh, steel. There we go. And that'll be this as well, this little outer plate. Create a new material, let's call it steel. And really this is gonna be fairly simple. It's a diffuse and a glossy, all mixed together. So let's grab a mix shader. And connect those guys up like so. And really the only difference is the uh, color right now. So just turn this down right about there and this one as well, probably right about there should be good. And that is actually a, a nice steel color. I'm going to give it a color in our viewport. And if we hit control I, we can actually select the entire speaker cone. So, or the speaker cone itself. So, oops, control I, create a new material slot, new material, and just Replace this diffuse with a velvet. We could go into more detail here, but the velvet actually handles pretty well for this situation. So let's just assign that like so. And we want to make this outer rim here, also using this material. So there we go. And let's just recolor this in our 3D view viewport. And let's uh, fix this here. And that is good. So let's do that to our other speaker now. So we just take this. There we go. Like so. Actually, if we just give it a steel material and then select this, 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 and that guy there, let's grab the uh, material, the uh, spe speaker cone, and assign it. That will be good. And there's actually one more part that needs the steel material, and that is right here on the back of the uh, the pedals. So these two rods here actually use the speak or the uh, steel as well. So let's just assign that like so. We're going to begin the compositing or the uh, compositing process. Uh, so we'll have to render it. Before we do that, though, we should turn on the ambient occlusion. And now you are ready to render. So just turn up the number of samples. I'm going to run it at 250 samples, and it should give fairly good results, and I will see you when that is done. So once that finishes, we are ready to go. Uh, so let's uh, begin just by, uh, I don't know, maybe uh, working, give it a little bit of contrast. So we're going to use the ambient occlusion, which we can see here. Let's hit shift and then space to uh, to make this viewport here larger so we can actually see what we're doing more easily. So this is the ambient occlusion layer. It's a little bit uh, pixely, a little bit, uh, yeah. So let's use a blur node to clean that up a little bit, set it to fast Gaussian. And let's just hit it, set it up to one, maybe two. Not too much, because we don't want it to uh, escape the boundaries. So I'm just going to hide that. And let's bring in a mix shader. Or not a mix shader, but a, a mixer. And plug those in, just like that. 
and well, let's just set it to multiply. Turn down the factor amount a little bit. So at zero, it's our original image. At one, it will multiply this, multiply the black by the uh, color. So we can actually just mess with the, the darkness. So I'm just gonna turn on clamp and set it to 0 0.5, and that should be good. So I'm gonna hide that now. I'm hiding these because it makes it uh, easier to see what's going on later. Uh, next, we're probably going to use the Z, Z output. So let's bring in a normal, or a normalizer. And what this does is it takes the input value and puts it somewhere between 0 and 1. So we can see that now, whereas if we had looked at it just straight out, it would be just completely white. Uh, while it's not the same white, it to us looks like nothing. And we can't really use just the straight out very much. I can't really think of any applications where it would work without a little bit of work or using the normalizer. So we're going to use this later. Mm, maybe not. But let's bring in a mix node. So straight out, this is a bit too, uh, bit too bright. So what I'm intending here is to use this to tell or to give kind of a haze. So you can kind of see it working here where we've got this nice haze back in this area. And as you go further away from the camera, it becomes hazier. Uh, let's first just set this to screen. It's a different blending type, and I think it works better. And since we're going for a kind of a warmer, or I'm going for a little bit warmer image, I'm just going to bump this yellow a little bit, a little more. Something kind of like that looks pretty good. Um, what we can do, though, is if we bring in a mix node here and set the uh, color to black, we can actually adjust how much this uh, this haze effect works. Uh, this haze will work in um, a forest or other scenes if you want it as well. So that's how that works. So I'm just going to hide those now. So next, let's go ahead and bring in a vignette. So find yourself an ellipse mask. Um, Blender, I don't know when they changed this, but it no longer requires something going into the input, and so we're actually just going to ignore it. So let's just use this, and I'm going to set it probably right about there. That should be good. Um, let's bring in a blur node. And set it to fast Gaussian. Turn on relative, and this should be about 32 and 32. So that should be good. I'm going to hide that. And let's bring in another multiply node. So mix, set the type to multiply, plug our image in the top, plug the, the vignette in the bottom, and now it's got a nice vignette. We can adjust the amount of the vignette by changing the factor. And I'm just going to leave it actually about 0.9. So this is all looking pretty good. Uh, we can bring out a little bit more realism by using a little bit of dispersion. So let's get a lens distortion and disperse it um, probably about 0 0.05. Let's try that. Maybe a little bit less. Something. We want it so that it is not quite noticeable. It's still a little bit noticeable, but this will work just fine. So I'm just going to hide that now. And to hide it, you just hit H. There we go. All clean. So this is looking fairly good. Um, now let's actually make this bright spot in the back a bit brighter and kind of uh, give it some glare. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to use the RGB curves. So RGB curves. There we go. And if we just plug the image in, like so, and we bump this lower value forward, it will uh, bring out the brighter areas and it will darken the uh, dark areas. And if we decrease this amount, it will pretty much have an effect over the whole image. So that's good enough, pretty much what I'm looking for. And then let's actually duplicate this uh, normalize node by hitting Shift D, and that will just turn it into a black and white image. Let's then reduplicate this RGB curve and drag this guy forward like so. And as we adjust this, this bright spot in the back will slowly get brighter. So right, something probably right about there, maybe a little less, something like that. Should be good. I'm going to hide these two guys. Okay. And now let's blur it a little bit. So let's grab a blur node. And that way, the uh, when we go to give it a glare, the uh, ghosts and the streaks, it doesn't count each of these little pieces and add a blur or add a glare. Uh, instead, it'll just treat it as one solid bright spot. So let's just plop that in there. Set it to fast Gaussian. Set the uh, X and the Y to about 4 or 5. doesn't really matter, so long as it's kind of smooth. And now if we bring in the uh, glare, plug that in like that. Uh, it may take its time. But uh, let's go ahead and set it to uh, ghosts. And... I'm going to turn the quality up to high. Uh, medium should work fine too, but uh, yeah. And since really the only thing on here that is uh, that we want, we've already uh, determined how it is, so let's just turn down the threshold all the way. And you can see that we've got our nice uh, streaks coming out. Let's turn up the iterations to about 5 and it'll become more noticeable. You can play around with the, uh, the color modulation. If we turn it all the way up to 1, there will be lots of colors. If we turn it to 0, it'll just be white. Or That's not perfectly white, I don't think. But I'll just turn it up, something like that. And if we set the mix to 1, it will just be this uh, the ghosts. So those are ghosts. Let's duplicate this glare node and uh, get, make it into a streaks. So something kind of like that. The threshold and mix value have already been set because we just duplicated it. Color modulation as well, and the iterations. Pretty much everything is duplicated. So let's, uh, I want to turn up the streaks to 5 and turn up the fade all the way to 1. So this will create this kind of crazy star, and under most circumstances this probably wouldn't look that great, but this effect is going to give us the uh, kind of a, a faked volume volumetric lighting. And it looks pretty good if it's used properly. And hopefully it will work with us, because sometimes it doesn't always work very nicely. So uh, now since I'm going for a warmer image, I'm just going to bring in a color balance. And this gives us these nice wheels. And we can adjust the uh, lighter or lighter to darker colors. So this one pretty much has a control. This first wheel has control over the entire spectrum. This one has kind of this medium gray area. And this, this last one has more control over the really bright areas. If I recall, that's how it works. Yeah. So we can just bump these toward yellow and just give it a nice yellow sunbeam like uh, effect. <clears throat> so now let's go ahead and grab another mix node because we want to combine these two images here. Set it to add. And if we make the uh, the top one, this streaks, and the bottom one, our uh, or 
sorry, the top one, the glare, or the ghosts, and the bottom one, the glare, we can have control over how much of this explodey star effect comes out. So if I turn that all the way to zero, we won't see any of it. But if I bump it up to three or 0.4, we can see a lot more. So that just gives us control over how much of this explosion streaky thing we get. So now we really want to just combine the whole thing. So let's bring out another add node, plug, uh, plug the lens distortion into the top and our explosion streaky special effects into the bottom. And if we plug that in, we can see we get those nice streaks. And that looks pretty good. Um, let's go grab another color balance. The color wheels. Yeah. So I want to kind of uh, cool things off a little bit. So I'm going to bump this first one to toward the blue a little bit. And then maybe bump this guy a little green. And this last one down kind of reddish. Something like that. Maybe a little too much red. Yeah, there we go. And if you're finding that this is having too much control or taking over your image a little bit too much, you can actually just play with the factor amount. I'm fine with it, so I'm going to leave it at one. And if you still feel like uh, it's overly composited, what you're going to need to do is you're gonna bring out another mix node the top, or just drag it in there like so. Actually, let's switch them. And set the top one back to this lens distortion. So if you have the mix set to one, it will be completely composited. If you turn it back to zero, it will be what is coming directly out of our lens distortion. So you can just bump this and it will add a little bit of our special effects. So, yeah, when you're done, just uh, connect up the compositor output to the output of that mix node, and it should be good to go. So I'm just going to select all these and hit the H, hide it all, make it all small. There we go. Yeah. doesn't really change the uh, speed or anything, it's just keeps everything smaller. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please like it and subscribe to BlenderWiz if you haven't already. Don't forget to leave suggestions for future tutorials that you would like to see.